Hello there again, friends. Today is 1-6-2022, and today is Odin Vlog Project Day 33, and we are on uh, landing page part 6, and I'm happy to report this is the final um, segment uh, part of to this uh, mini-series. Um, we, uh, or I went ahead and uh, completed the rest of the uh, two uh, sections, and rounded off the project so we'll go into that now um, <clears throat> I wrote the HTML and CSS for this this guy right here and I, I believe I called it uh, um, call the action wrapper and then here's the footer uh, called footer wrapper and button it all up so let's get without further ado let's hit the editor so <clears throat> So I have a div class here called call to action wrapper and as you can see that wraps the entire um, section well not the entire section the uh, this section here um, I highlight that better so it's easier to see call to action wraps that whole thing inside call to action wrapper we have a class called class to a uh, call to action container and inside the container we have a class called call to action card and inside the card is h3 jb technologies newsletter a p class called call to action text and then outside of that um, card wrapper or card action card and inside the call to action container we have the button that's kind of hard to see but when you highlight the divs it makes more sense so uh, so this call to action container contains the action card and the uh, button <clears throat> sign up button uh, right here and it says second right here the space and I'll show you in the code here uh, in CSS why I did that uh, momentarily and then um, I wrote the CSS for that completed it and then I decided that didn't take all that long and it wouldn't take all that long to describe so I figured I'd just finish it up so I came back to HTML and I did the uh, footer so that's this right here, class footer wrapper. Inside that we have a div class called footer, and inside of that we have a paragraph JLB, JB Technologies LLC, and it is a uh, called footer text. <clears throat> Try to keep the classes class names intuitive. Again, I didn't want to leave P generic because I knew I was going to have to add CSS to it, and as we've talked about in previous videos, I have many elements uh, so you want to you want to create classes for those so they um, because they're all all gonna have different formatting excuse me not all the time but sometime mm, pardon me um, so with that said let's go look at the page here the example here so this is this is the the wrapper or sorry right here this is the call to action wrapper um, Actually, I'll just show you mine. So here's the end result. So if we F12 the sucker, we'll see here. Um, go click this. And so here is the, uh, that's flex container. The, the mouse, you have to be kind of sensitive with it. <clears throat> there you go. Call, there's call to action wrapper. What do you see? It uh, has some uh, margin and padding involved, and we'll go over that in a minute. And then in here you have the call to action container and inside of that you have the h3 the p tag call to action text the h3 which <clears throat> I skipped over that one but <clears throat> didn't need to do anything with the h3 because I only use I already knew throughout the project I was only going to use h1 h2 h3 and they're all unique so I called the CSS selector as h3 and CSS so I didn't need, didn't need to give that a class and over here we have sign up button which is also flex item so flex item here flex container as you can see the flex container is the call to action the flex item is the come on there should be two flex items here so you got the sign up buttons of flex item and this should be call to action card there we go it's easier just to click it down here. So the card to action, uh, call to action card. There you go. Is the other flex item, and that's a row. So there, 
next to each other. And so there's that. And then the footer is, there's the flex container for the footer. And there's the P footer text, flex item, and JV technologies. And you see there's some padding and margin involved there. So let's hit the, uh, hit the CSS here. So <clears throat> here's the call to action. It's 100 pixels of margin. So basically it's 100 pixels. Uh, if I get it to mouse correctly here. Call to action container, there you go. There's the, um, that's not right. There we go. Call to action wrapper. There's the yellow is the, uh, the 100 uh, pixels of margin. Okay. And again, that's just eyeballing it because that's what we've been doing so far. Call to action container. Background color is 3882F6. That's in the requirements uh, file. And we have display of flex as we always have done. Justify content space around this. Uh, this, as we've learned before, this uh, this gives the uh, the space around it around each card is to be even, so they're all even like that. So that space is equidistant to that space is equidistant to that space. And we have line item center, so that centers the line the items. Uh, um, I always get this confused. Um, line items that's hors that's a uh, vertical alignment and then justify contents is the uh, alignment horizontally yep uh, margin left is 300 margin right is 300 and that is because um, as you see this thing is just not behaving tonight um I added uh, yeah 300 margin left 300 margin right um, which is what you see right there, the margin on the sides. Um, it's hard to point to it, but right here. Because I needed to shrink the box so that it looked like the finished result product because it didn't go all the way across the page on the uh, image page. And we have a border radius of 10. If you remember, recall from previous videos, that creates the curvature around the square, so it rounds it off. And padding of 50 pixels, which is this space in between here. The purple so there's your padding um, all looks good there h3 call um, selector that's got the color e5 e7 eb which is the <clears throat> the text color that's in the requirements file and then we zeroed out the padding and margin and so there's h3 the JB Technologies newsletter. <coughs> uh, we zero the pad and margin margin out because I had to do that because this by default, if you remember from previous le previous videos, this by default has um, padding and margin defaulted to it, and so they were the JB Technologies newsletter was gapped uh, far away, be uh, horizontally from the. Uh, vertically, excuse me, from the click the sign up, there was a big space in between here. So I zeroed out both of those to get that effect. And uh, you'll see that here too. So the call to action text, padding and margin has been zeroed out. Color is the same. And sign up button. Uh, I had to Google this. We've done this before. This is not unfamiliar. This is the creating the border on the sign up button. So that creates this. this uh, this border bezel, that white line. I know it's hard to see my mouse, but along the outside there. Um, and in order to get that to be a thinner line, you put a, a pixel definition in front of the solid. So this is that. This is from. The, so the file or the font color is from the f uh, requirements file. This tells it it's solid and not dashed or dotted. And this tells the pixel size of it, of the width of it. So it's two pixels wide, but pretty thin. As you can see there, it's not real thick. Um, and then we have the footer wrapper is just simply the background color is from the requirements file. And that's this right here. And then we have the footer itself, which this, for the most part, is copy and pasted from the header. So it's a display flex. We're aligning at center, just as we have always done. 
uh, margin is 10 pixels so there is uh, 10 pixels of uh, margin uh, that's the yellow uh, highlight around it um, that's to give it that that uh, that gap in between <coughs> excuse me and then justify content center uh, so that centers it horizontally and font, col font size is 18 pixels <coughs> that's in the requirements file and the color of it is that same color as the uh, sign up button so line so E5, E7, EB and that's it so I committed everything to GitHub and so you end up with a product that looks like this when you're all said and done I did go through and I gave another effort at trying to make it more responsive, um, but I gave up on it because the requirements, as we've mentioned in different other videos, there is no requirement to make this responsive or make it viewable on you know a mobile device or a tablet or whatever. So I honestly just left it. So um, I um, did my last commits, as I said, to uh, GitHub. So this is um, this is it right here. So <clears throat> have all that updated there and then I added the, I added in a tech a little bit to the readme file and it says today's date 16/2022 is last commit and completed this project. I started this project on 11/2022 which is January 1st, beginning of new year, new project and got it done in 6 days. I've learned a ton about how to use HTML, CSS and Flexbox in particular to make pages look great and be responsive. I'm happy with the end result of this made up company landing page I look forward to moving into JavaScript next and adding that functionality to new projects when the time comes and I also um, so I went out to the dashboard and I updated the project so I published it through github um, so it adds it out here so you can see I've got my recipes from earlier and now I've got my landing page out here and it's published to github um, and so I'm 60, 63% through foundations. And next thing we'll be doing is going starting into JavaScript. So a whole new section. This is going to be um, brand new to me. Uh, I have zero JavaScript experience. So this will be, I look forward to it. I look forward to the challenges. Um, because I we've just been plowing through Flexbox and doing all the exercises in alignment. That was a big bear doing the six six exercises in alignment took a long time and then doing this project for six days took a long time um, I am going to reward myself and I'm going to take a break so they will not I will not likely be studying tomorrow uh, 1 7 which is Friday so there probably won't be an upload for tomorrow and we'll pick it back up starting in JavaScript um, on the weekend so I'm gonna, I'm gonna treat myself a little bit so um, and if you need a refresher, if, if you're not quite there yet, or if you're following along on how to do the um, the uh, the GitHub uh, uh, push to public repo, that is right down all the way at the bottom, right here. Viewing your project on the web. Ugh, sorry about that. Viewing your project on the web, right here. So you could go through that. I know it's a little small because I didn't blow it up because I didn't plan on going through this. But you can go through that a couple steps. It takes like five minutes once you get – make sure you have all your commits up first and you have everything the way you like it before you publish it. So um, make sure your typos are fixed, uh, your code looks good, your syntax is good, um, and all that. And by no means am I perf you know, perfect. Uh, you guys can feel free to look out there and check out my, uh, my project if you like uh, out there on GitHub. Um, it it definitely could be um, massaged. It could be cleaned up. It could uh, the CSS could be probably uh, made uh, uh, less complicated. I probably don't need as many selectors. I mentioned that before in previous videos. I mean, I have 173 lines of code for my CSS. I it's probably a lot. I uh, probably don't need that. But um, I I just I'm good with it. I'm happy. I'm really excited with how it turned out. So. Uh, with that said, um, I'm going to kind of wrap this up here. So we're going to take that break and then we'll hit hit it hard on the weekend for uh, JavaScript. So 
I hope everyone's doing well and they're sa and you're safe. And uh, thank you for coming along on the journey with me today. I hope you learned something. And uh, please uh, like, share, and subscribe for more content. And let me know down in the comments how you're doing with this project and if you're nearing completion. So I'm pretty pumped about it. I'm ready to um, take a little break, uh, spend some time with the with my family, and not worry about this just for a day. Not not a not a crazy break, but I I feel I'm deserving of it because I've been going hard hard at it um, for quite a while. So got a lot accomplished and then after javascript it'll be a little bit of back end and conclusion and then we'll be going on to more in-depth stuff so even more so than what we've done so far but uh i appreciate you guys i appreciate all the new subscribers um i i really love you guys and i appreciate your comments to so keep them coming and uh and uh, give me your feedback let me know how you're doing if you need help or you're stuck or you want to offer me advice i'm cool with that too so until next time, see ya.